from high above the Frank Parati Jr. Arena, this is Quinnipiac Bobcat Sports Network and the Quinnipiac men's ice hockey team taking on RPI in a Saturday evening ECAC rivalry matchup. And we welcome you inside the broadcast booth, Jack Main, Matt Mungo alongside me today as we bring you through Rand Pecknold's 1,000th career game as the head coach of the Quinnipiac Bobcats. What a career he has had so far. A career he has had. 28th season. He was hired for the position on May 5th, 1994, and since then it's taken over from a D2 program to a, D1, a successful D1 program who's had a frozen four birth in 2013. Most wins of any coach in QU hockey history and Quinnipiac athletics history with 571. Looking for the 572nd tonight. I was there live when Rand Pecknold captured that 500th career victory just four years ago before there was a pandemic. And here he is coaching in his 500, or excuse me, his 1,000th career game. Now we got a little bit of a surprise on the side of RPI. Instead of Jack Watson, the hot hand first year that Dave, has had, Dave Smith has had in net, he's opting to go with the veteran Lyndon Marshall as the opening puck drop is won by RPI. Bobcats will secure in their defensive zone, but instead it's going to be Lyndon Marshall in net for the engineers. Lyndon Marshall, six foot three. The size advantage is there for the RPI goaltender, the graduate goaltender, who he can cover a lot of that net with his size. On the other side, Yanni Peretz getting yet another start for the Quinnipiac men's ice hockey team. He has helped lead this team as a shot on net by Van Ness is deflected away by Baxter. Yanni Peretz has been added to the watch list for goaltender of the year, and he has just won his third straight ECAC Goalie of the Month award. RPI trying to control in the neutral zone. It's taken away by the Bobcats, and we have our first whistle of the game, 19-11 remaining in this first period. So just 49 seconds in, we have our first whistle of the game. It looks like it'll be an offensive faceoff for the Engineers. First line for the Bobcats is out there looking to generate some offense. They had a really great game last night, but couldn't convert. We'll see if they can convert on their first shift here tonight. Bon Giovanni and John Beaton will battle for the faceoff right in front of Yanni Perret. It's won by Bonjo. He slings it up for Ty Smolonic, one of the great budding stars on this Quinnipiac men's team. Was just with the U.S. national team. Helping them get to the Olympics, but he is now here trying to help the number two ice hockey team in the country get another win. They beat Union just last night, trying to make it two in a row. Here comes Beaton for RPI. He's trying to skate around less. He's not going to do it. Zach Metza there to back up for the Bobcats. Lombardi down in the corner. He's going to go up for Metza, and Metza's going to go up the far side and now opt to pass over. Smolonic has tremendous speed, and that opens up a lot of the game for Bon Giovanni and Lombardi. Lombardi's a workhorse, and Smolonic has speed. That's two complementary factors that they have on that first line with the goal scorer and ca in Captain Wyatt Bon Giovanni. Over on the far side, RPI is going to dump it all the way down, and we're going to get an icing call. First icing of the game so far. Run. So a slow start so far, Matt, but we have what we predict to be one of the most exciting matchups uh, in the People's United Center this season. Yeah, RPI comes in. They're looking for, a, they're fighting for the top four spot in the ECAC. With a win tonight, they will get into that top four uh, spot in the ECAC conference, and they're hungry. They played tough the last few games. They played Quinnipiac tough in December. Quinnipiac defeating Ron Salier 2-0. One of those goals, an empty net goal, so really a one nothing game. So it was a tight matchup, and RPI plays a hard and gritty game, and that's how they succeed, uh, and that's how they can succeed tonight if they stick to that and really grind out, wear out the opponent, hit a lot. They have a lot of contribution from up and down the lineup. 12 different goal scorers, at 12 different players are game-winning goal scorers, and no player has more than one game-winning goal this season for RPI. So that's a good look when you want to look at contributions up and down the lineup in close games. Puck is yet to be controlled consistently by one team. Ethan Lay's going to go down. He's going to try to put one in. He's unable to do so. He got screened off nicely by Jack New. 
up into the neutral zone for Ethan Lay. He's going to skate to the far side. He's going to put a shot on net, but it's going to go wide. Lay's going to try to dump it back down. It gets blocked and taken away by Hauber. Ethan Lay gets turned around in the neutral zone, and he's finally able to corral the puck right next to the Bobcat Claw at center ice. Cipollone down on the offensive zone. He gets turned around, and now RPI is going to get a chance to set something up offensively. Down by Yanni Peretz. He guards that right side as a shot on net is going to go wide. RPI able to keep it in their offensive zone. A slow-moving game to start. 16-38 remaining in the first period. And this is RPI's best offensive look so far. They have great in-zone. Oh. Uh, Yanni Peretz is going to swallow one up right inside the blue crease. And a little chippiness after the play. But Peretz is unharmed. No harm, no foul. 627, both teams go for a line change. That's how RPI can get scoring chances if they screen the goaltender. Peretz had a shut one of his nine shutouts this season against RPI in their home rink. Now that they're on the road, get screens in front of the net. Cause traffic in front of the net. That's difficult for any goaltender to read. And that's how they can score tonight. If they're able to get bodies to the net, cause some havoc in front, that's how we've seen Peretz surrender a few of the goals that he has this season, the, the few goals he surrendered this season. Here comes Chow down for the Bobcats. Great speed. Left-hand wrister is blocked. And nice save by Lyndon Marshall. Lyndon Marshall comes into this game. He was benched for freshman Jack Wet Watson. And Marshall owns a career 89-8 save percentage in 72 games played. He's 21-41-4. And, and in this season, he's 8-11-2 with a 2-5-9 goal against average. So not great for the graduate student out of Victoria, British Columbia. On the other side, Jack Watson, a freshman 6'3", has been outstanding for Smith and Nett with a 1-6-3 goals against average this season. And a 9-44 save percentage, that's usually more of a testament for how well a goaltender is doing game in and game out. So that average is really strong. Uh, Marshall, the taller goaltender, the graduate, but doesn't have as the impressive numbers that Watson has. Down onto the other side, Lombardi's going to corral it for the Bobcats. Bon Giovanni's going to flick one all the way up. It's going to hit the Jumbotron and fall back onto the ice. 15-53 remaining in the first period. Still slow moving out of the gates, but we don't really have to tell the story of Yanni Peretz. We know what he can do. In his 18 games this season, 14-1-2, .8 goals against average. That's the best in the ECAC. And a 9-5-6 save percentage, 9 shutouts. That's the big number for Yanni Peretz as he tries to continue to grow on a record setting season. Desi Burgard down in the offensive zone for the Bobcats. He's going to get tied up with beaten down low. He's unable to get anything to go. And now Avari Rossinen loses the puck in the neutral zone and Chorney's going to have to go corral it for the Bobcats. RPI has numbers if they hustle. Chorney able to smartly pin it up against the boards. Filion's going to flip it up for Burgart. But Beaton's able to keep it in the blue line for the Engineers. A shot on goal is, oh, it's knocked around in front of Peretz. He's lucky it wasn't able to go down. And a terrific defensive stand for the Bobcats. RPI working it around. They lose it across the blue line, and now everyone has to go back. Quinnipiac will look to set something up in front of their bench. It's TJ Friedman right now playing catch with Burgart in the back. Over across to Chorney. Chorney's going to flick it up, and... A big hit right there in front of the RPI bench, and there's a Bobcat sitting on the ice. It looks like it's TJ Friedman. He's okay, though. He gets up and gets a nice tap on the butt from Ty Smolonic. TJ Friedman's another one of those hard-nosed players, one of those horses for Quinnipiac. How we see Lombardi on the first line. They have two of those lines have a hard-working player, a grinder, and that's what wins the hockey games against teams like RPI, who are also going to be just as physical and just as they're going to add a lot of pressure offensively. Uh, having players like Friedman at, in, your, in, in the faceoff dot, fighting to win faceoffs, getting the puck in deep and, and winning battles is exactly how you're going to win the hockey game. Friedman wins the faceoff for the Bobcats. Shot on net by Mendel is going to be deflected away by Marshall. Mendel's going to get it back on the near side. His attempt is tipped by McIsaac, and now the whistle's blown as I believe that puck hit the net. Bobcats skating from right to left. RPI skating from left to right, no matter how you are joining us today on a 
beautiful Saturday from Hamden, Connecticut. We, the rain finally cleared out, and it was a it was a nice Saturday for anybody who wanted to go out there and do some early February activities. The groundhog did see his shadow, so six more weeks of winter for us up here in New England. Didn't feel like it today. Nice <laughs> walk to the rink today. A beautiful walk to the rink. A beautiful day on what has been really a crummy weather week otherwise. There's a shot on net blocked away by Peretz. Nice right pad save and it's another shot. The one-timer from the blue line is going to go errant. Quinlan fighting down low for the Bobcats. He's being tied up right now. It's Mandel who's going to walk away with the puck for the Bobcats. Jaden Lee is going to skate up now. He's going to fire one all the way down and the Bobcats will dump and change. Chow gets lost in the neutral zone with the puck. Gus Van Ness is there to clean up the mess, though. And now Chow's got an opportunity to skate down. He's not quick enough, and it goes behind the RPI net. Corralling down there, Jake Johnson. Johnson up into the neutral zone. He's going he's gonna to get the puck right back, and now RPI up into their offensive zone. Puck goes all the way behind Peretz. Bobcats corral in their defensive area. Skyler Brindamore is going to skate down into the offensive zone. He gets help by, from Gus Van Ness, but terrific defensive play by Mason Klee. And he will fling it back across the blue line, and the Bobcats will have to reset. Linden, Luca, playing catch in the neutral zone. Luca's going to skate all the way down behind Peretz, and RPI is going to need to look to reset near the blue line. Key with a one-timer is going to go up into the net, and the whistle is blown. 13-12, we are still scoreless. Shot on net, three for RPI, two for the Bobcats. A slow-moving game so far, and we are due for immediate timeout, but we haven't had an opportunity to get one yet. <laughs> a little bit of a slow start, you're right. I expected a little bit more pressure from each side considering they, they both need this win tonight. RPI needs the win to hop into that top four of the ECAC, and Quinnipiac needs the win in a bounce back. They won last night, but it was a very close game to a Union team that's struggling this season and struggling in team, against teams that are better than them in the standings. Wyatt Bongiovanni gets pushed around to the neutral zone. And the Bobcats will look to set something up in their defensive zone. Bon Giovanni's trying to go change, and now we've got a whistle, and I believe that will give us our first media timeout. I may be wrong. There is the under 15 timeout. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not missing that rule, am I? I think you are. I am missing that rule? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hockey's, uh, hockey's quick like that. It just goes. <laughs> it has a tendency to be fast. For, for our listeners, Jack Main is a fantastic basketball announcer and commentator. <laughs> uh, hockey may not be his first. I'm from the, from the great state of Vermont, I have yeah. to get some winter sports under my belt. UVM not traditionally a great hockey team lately, so. Number two in the country, I attend their school, so why not try to get on a QBSN call every once in a while? That's a true story. I did not know anything about hockey before coming to Quinnipiac. I got on a women's hockey call. In my second week on campus, and I was scared out of my mind, but I was able to get it done, and here we are calling men's hockey, the number two men's ice hockey team in Rand Pecknold's 1,000th career game. Full house and Rand Pecknold's 1,000th career game, and Jack Maine's on the call. Who would have guessed? <laughs> Who would have thought? Not me. <laughs> New's going to dump it down for RPI. They are unable to corral it in their offensive zone, and Josh Johnson's going to corral it in RPI's defensive zone. They'll set something up in the neutral zone. Instead, they opt to dump. Philly on down low for the Bobcats, trying to work it up. He's, getting, he's being fought right now by Rory Herman. Herman down low. One-timer is a miss as Ethan DeYoung got a stick in there. Jacob Laka had a great look on net. Instead, it was Van Ness who's had other ideas. Philly on in the defensive zone for Quinnipiac, trying to flick it down deep, and Marcus Chorney takes a big hit on the RPI bench. He gets up and skates for his shift change. Philly on down low for the Bobcats. He's going to try a wraparound, backhanded, and that was really an ill-advised shot there. McIsaac for a new, and RPI works it into the neutral zone. Ottoville Lippon. Looking to put a shot on that. He's unable to do so, and RPI loses control of the puck again, and they're going to have to reset. 11.33 remaining in this first period. Still scoreless. Shots 2-3 to three in favor of RPI. Quinnipiac's doing a great, great job trapping 
RPI in the neutral zone and not allowing them to get that zone entry, that first zone entry. And that allows that allows the Bobcats to break out of their own end and turn the tide in the other direction into the, their offensive zone rather than having to be hemmed in their own zone. Because once RPI has gotten into the Bobcats zone thus far in this game, they've been able to go to work and make a few opportunities occur. So the fact that the Bobcats are recognizing that and causing some havoc in the neutral zone, making sure RPI can't break into their zone has contributed to the Bobcats successfully defending so far in this game. Joey Cipollone takes a nice hit down low, and we're going to get a whistle. We'll see if there's a penalty upcoming. Sounds like the Bobcats will have the power play. It is indeed the Bobcats going on the power play. It looks as if Anthony Baxter will be heading in for two minutes, probably for boarding. Not a very good power play for the Bobcats this season 14 for 97 just 14 percent on the power play so we'll see if they can capitalize here capitalizing in games that could be close is crucial and rpi has allowed no more than four goals in the last five games so jaden jaden lee and ty spilonic lead the bobcats offensive unit on the power play zach metza jaden lee and ty play catch up top bon giovanni ty one timer is going to go wide a strong left-handed strike from smilonic but it was just too high. The Bobcats will reset. Ty on the near side will fire over for Bonjo. Bonjo to Lee. Over to Metza. Metza gets some pressure and now has to dump it down for Lombardi. Lombardi one time going to be a little bit wide. Bon Giovanni on the far side for Jaden Lee. Lee back over to Metza. He thought about it. Smolonic with another shot. It goes off the legs of Mason Klee. Bonjo thought about it. Now takes it. Smolonic unable to tip it home. Klee with two blocks so far on the penalty kill for RPI. Standing strong as another Bon Giovanni one-timer is just wide. Metza in front of the net, gets the puck flicked away, and RPI is able to dump it. What a kill for RPI. Big penalty kill, not allowing the Bobcats to get going in this game, and that's what makes it tough for the Bobcats to get into games thus far this season, especially last night against Union, not being able to score, not being able to find the back of the net. It becomes more difficult and difficult as the game goes on. DeYoung, one-timer. Oh, it's just wide. A great opportunity there for TJ Friedman. Unable to get it to go. Oliver Chow now in the neutral zone for the Bobcats. Ethan DeYoung with an opportunity. He can't get there in time. Trying to get it inside. He's unable to do so. And another kill for RPI. 20 seconds remain in the power play for the Bobcats. They have got looks, but they have not been able to capitalize. RPI is doing a great job of getting in the lanes, blocking shots. Quinnipiac's best chances came off the rush rather than in the zone, and Marshall stood tall on the two Smolonic one-time attempts. Mendel's going to fire one time in front of the net, but no one was home to tip it, and RPI successfully kills off the penalty, so Quinnipiac continues to struggle, continuing to struggle on the power play. We're back to even strength now. 8.35 remaining in this first period, still scoreless. Quinnipiac able to take the lead in shots on goal, 4-3. Puck is going to go all the way down into the Quinnipiac defensive zone, and that'll be an icing. 8.22 remaining, still scoreless. Both teams will go for a change. Brand sending out the big boys to try to get a, a puck in the net this time, but Lyndon Marshall has stood strong for the engineers. This third line has been a great working line for the Bobcats this season. They get pucks to the net, bodies to the net. They're all tall above six feet tall, and they work to get those pucks to the net. They're not a Ty Smolonic who uses his tremendous speed to get to the net. They try and use their team play. They're like the Coneheads for the 1980 Men's Hockey Olympics <laughs> winning, uh, gold winning team. Pass, shoot, score. Pass, shoot, score. There's a piece of hockey history. If Matt Mungo and hockey history. There you go. I love that. It is Olympic season, so you might as well get in the spirit. Skyler Brindamore's get turned around, but he got double teamed and he had to pass it up for Lay. Chorney had an opportunity. He opts to pass in front of the net. Van Ness, opportunity, and Marshall's able to stand strong. Quinnipiac's able to corral the rebound. Ethan Lay is going to go on net and limit score! Ethan Lay pots it for the Bobcats. They finally break Marshall, and it's 1 0 Quinnipiac. A strange play. It didn't look like Marshall knew where the puck was or where the shot was coming from. But Lay, who scored the game-winning goal last night against Union, scores to open the game up tonight. 
patting the stats, but more importantly, patting the lead here for Quinnipiac. Coming out of the gate, 1-0 with about 7.50 left. They find a way to beat Marshall, who stood tall in a few of the really good attempts before, and find one, a way to sneak one in from the top of the circle. Well, we said that Pecknold sent out the big boys, and it worked. Ethan Lay gets his third of the season, the junior out of Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. His 13th career goal and his 28th career point. That's the goal you want to see from the Bobcats. You want to see them capitalizing on those opportunities where the goaltender's in a vulnerable or weak position. But it all started with the play of Brindamore and Van Ness getting the puck to the net, crashing in the zone and breaking down that danger zone in the slot. Lombardi with a quick wrister off the faceoff is a nice save by Marshall. So Marshall continuing to struggle in net. We'll see if Smith goes with Jack Watson later in the game here as the engineers find themselves down. All time between these two, Quinnipiac leads the series 19 to seven. There have been nine ties in this rivalry matchup. Smolonic loses the puck on the far side. He's gonna try to get it back though. Smolonic getting really turned around. Boncho between the legs. Oh, and Marshall couldn't corral it. And the puck is still loose, but it's corralled by the engineers. Zach Metza in the neutral zone. We'll play pass over with Brandon Less. Puck is gonna be dumped all the way down and Quinnipiac does not go for a line change. I was fooled on that play. That's gotta be an awkward hockey play. Jack Main doesn't know very much about. They announce Ethan Lay as the goal scorer up on the Jumbotron. Little tussle out in front of the Bobcat bench. RPI slings it all the way down into their offensive zone. Ethan Lay is there to collect it for Quinnipiac. He's going to go all the way around for Cipollone. Cipollone over to Les. Less for Lay. Lay loses the puck in the offensive zone, and it's cleaned up quickly by LePennin. LePennin for Linden. Linden, oh, puts a move on Chorney, but it's a nice save by Peretz using his right elbow to deflect the puck away. In front of the Quinnipiac net, it's collected by Friedman. Friedman's going to dump it down. Vari Rossin and skating in for the Bobcats as Friedman takes a rest. Chorney, or Cipollone, excuse me, all the way down there, and we're going to get a whistle here as there was a player on the ice, and he's looking like he may need a little bit of assistance. That is Jack Anu, the sophomore out of Oakville, Ontario, is slow to get up onto his feet. The trainer walks out in front of the RPI bench, but everyone will head back, and we finally get our first media timeout. Quinnipiac. One RPI, nothing on the Ethan Lay goal. We finally got our first breakthrough of this game after the power play. After the power play. The power play struggled this season, but Quinnipiac thrives on getting the pucks to the net and crashing into the, the danger zone. The danger zone, zone is the area between the slot and in the goaltender's crease. When they can set up, get two men down low, work, Rand Pecknell built this team on hard work. Get the puck in, get the puck behind the defenseman, get to work, and get the pucks to the net. Now, you have your skilled players, your skilled shooters like Bon Giovanni and Smolonic who use their professional level speed to get to the net and make plays happen. But if they're not going to have a break-in attempt, why try and use that skill to get in and break into the zone when they can set up, crash to the net, cause havoc in front of the goaltender? That's exactly what an RPI needs to do to Quinnipiac on this power play is get bodies to the net, get the bumper man in front, get a man screening the goaltender, get shots, crash in that danger zone, which it's hard to defend when you keep getting clammed and hemmed into your own zone. The further you get hemmed into your own zone, the more difficult it is for you to defend. Quinnipiac will have to defend here as they will have a defensive faceoff out of the media timeout. one nothing Bobcats, 5.54 remaining in the first period. Quinnipiac has taken a stronghold of this game offensively, now leading 12-5 to five in shots. And it looks like RPI actually is going to be going on the power play here. And it looks as if Marcus Chorney is in for, the, for Quinnipiac. He got two minutes for boarding, so we missed that. That was likely the reason why Anu was a little slow to get up, but now Quinnipiac will have to go on the penalty kill. They're able to dump it all the way down. So five on four. As RPI looks to set something up, TJ Freeman putting on what I would consider a full court press of basketball, but that's not what sport I'm calling right now. 
a good four check, a good four check four in the check. neutral zone. Yeah, as the head man on the four check, those are the players you want, a Lombardia Friedman, oh. the worker, to go and, fr go in and make that neutral zone four check. Desi Perkhart frustrated with stripes as he got nailed by the puck in the defensive zone, allowing RPI a free opportunity. No harm, no foul. That was RPI has to set up one minute remaining in the power play. The engineers have struggled on the power play as well, only converting on 15 of 93 total power plays this season. So struggling just as much as the Bobcats, almost equal numbers. That is where the game can really even out, especially for a team like RPI that's under 500. And Quinnipiac, of course, the number two team in the country, and just a week ago, the number one team in the country. RPI will look to set it up in their defensive zone. Quinnipiac applies the four check, and it's gonna. Everyone skates backwards. DeYoung and Lee are able to knock it away. Beaten with a pass down low. RPI unable to corral it though, and the the puck is loose. Mendel is able to get it over to Brindamore, over to Lee, and now Quinnipiac with a little short-handed opportunity here with 11 seconds to go. Instead, Lee opts to dump it all the way down. It doesn't hit the net, so no whistle. Five seconds remaining, and Quinnipiac has successfully killed off the penalty. Klee for RPI, going to dump it all the way down. He gets tangled up with Metza. And now we have another whistle right by the RPI offensive blue line. And we will get a faceoff. 3.48 remaining in the first period. Quinnipiac one, RPI nothing. RPI was unable to get a shot up on Peretz during that power play. So a great kill by the Bobcats. The Bobcats defending this game have done a very good job of making sure RPI can't get into their offensive zone by putting on a good four check. The Bobcats putting on a good four check in their offensive zone. So good, def good offense starts from the defensive zone and not allowing RPI to break out and cut through the neutral zone for quick zone entries has helped them keep RPI at bay. And RPI, the engineers, they succeed when they're getting contributions from the entire team. There's not one or two guys that are going to really carry the team. It's a team effort whenever they play in tight games. And they're going to need, as a team, from the top of the lineup to the fourth line, first line of fourth, fourth line, to get something generated, get something going. Zach Metza, Bon Giovanni in the neutral zone. He's got Oliver Chow over to his left. He's going to go to him a little bit too late. Now in front of the net, Ty Smolana can't get it there. Bon Giovanni, one-timer, and it's knocked away by Marshall. What a save by Marshall. Bon Giovanni and Ty Smolonic, two of the scariest skaters in the ECAC, staring Marshall in the face, and Marshall said, not in my house, and he knocked it away. Ty Smolonic has 11 goals this season, Bon Giovanni with 13, so both in double digits in 27 games played. They're about half a goal a game so far this season, so both are doing very well. And the workhorse line of Lombardi, Brenda Moore, and Van Ness is back on the ice for the faceoff. Avari Rossinen and Marcus Chorney join those three. And oh, Avari Rossinen just tabletopped Luca right in the neutral zone. Rossinen up for Lombardi. Lombardi's unable to keep it in front of the Bobcat bench. Instead, it's LePennon who's going to dump it all the way down for the Engineers. Puck is pinned up on the far side. Quinnipiac's able to come away with it. It's Gus Van Ness. He will work up right here against Settery. Settery over across to the Bobcats bench. Laka unable to corral it. Avari Rossinen is there to corral it for Quinnipiac. Van Ness on the far side. He will look to work it up. Lombardi, Brindamore across the blue line. Quinnipiacs go for a three-man line change. RPI trying to corral it in their defensive zone. Lombardi got walled off nicely by Seth, or by Seath, excuse me. Friedman gets, got checked right in front of the RPI bench, and Quinnipiac will dump it now. Quin oh, TJ Friedman ate it as he got into the neutral zone, and he would had a breakaway opportunity. The Bobcats are in good position right now, considering they're up 1-0 with two minutes left in the first. But they've struggled on a few of the opportunities. That was another great opportunity where they could have at least converted or gotten a shot on net. But Friedman tripped over his own two feet. If RPI is in this game, if RPI pots one already, we're looking and saying the Bobcats are struggling right now. 
But the fact that they're up one nothing, I think, is helping uh, some of their poor plays so far this game. De Young battling down low with Dumbus Dumbuski. Jaden Lee will look over to, or excuse me, Brandon Les will look over to skate for the Bobcats. He's unable to corral before the icing is whistled. 1.30 remaining in the first period. Quinnipiac struggling offensively, as Matt just alluded to. They're unable to really keep track of the puck when it's in the neutral zone, and having your, having your skaters trip over their own two feet is not ideal in a breakaway opportunity. You know, the ice is slippery, Jack. Ice, they, do, they do mention that every game right on the Jumbotron, which I think is, well, I won't state my opinion on that. However, it is a little self-explanatory. Ice is slippery. <laughs> Dubinsky's going to dump it down deep. Cher Fultz for RPI is battling real hard right now with Zach Metza. DeYoung is able to corral it over to TJ, or over to Fillion, excuse me. Metza in the neutral zone will fling it back for Jaden Lee. Brandon Less. Down low, no icing is called. RPI corrals it in their defensive area. Under a minute to play here. RPI trying to get something to go, but Quinnipiac will is relentless in the neutral zone right now. RPI will dump and change. 33 seconds remaining in this first period. Quinnipiac up 1-0. Bon Giovanni skating quickly around defenders, but he's going to have to dump, and he will not get an opportunity to put a shot up on the net. Ty Smolonik's there quickly for Quinnipiac, but the puck is bouncing around right now behind Marshall. Smolonik behind the Quinnipiac net, and he's met quickly, and the puck is just sitting still, finally flicked away. Avari Rossinen over to Bon Giovanni for Ty Smolonik. Smolonik... Opportunity, Bon Giovanni on goal. No, it's not going to go. Lombardi had an opportunity. The whistle blows. And Quinnipiac with an exciting opportunity near the end of that period. They were unable to convert. They do, however, lead one to nothing. Matt, it was a slow start. Quinnipiac was going, went on the power play, unable to convert with the, up, with the man advantage. But shortly thereafter, it was Ethan Lay who got his third goal of the season. Yeah, the Bobcats came out a little bit stale, and RPI did not come out like a team that wants to be in the top four of the ECAC. So I'm a little bit surprised. I'm not sure if it's because of the schedule each team has had this week. RPI, has this will be their fourth game this week alone, and this is the Bobcats playing in a back-to-back -back at home in a tough matchup yesterday, a surprisingly tough matchup against Union. So we'll see if they bring the energy in the second period in a very the score is close. It's, it is. It doesn't seem it's too a, like too close of a game, but it's only one nothing. If RPI scores, it, it's still a one goal game, and if RPI scores, it's a tie game. So we'll see. Even if the Bobcats come out and score early, two nothings, something that RPI can tie up. Uh, RPI in the games they've played the last few games, as I mentioned before, haven't allowed four goals uh, in the last four games in each of those individual games. So they like it close. They do like it close indeed. Quinnipiac likes a bigger lead, and we'll see how they're able to combat those ghosts coming up here. 14 minutes remaining in the intermission. Jack May and Matt Mungo, we will be right back with you. You are listening to Quinnipiac Men's Ice Hockey on the Quinnipiac Bobcat Sports Network. Welcome back to the People's United Center as the Quinnipiac Men's Ice Hockey Team, number two in the country, taking on the RPI Engineers in an ECAC Saturday night rivalry matinee. Skylar Brindamore and Linden able to doing the face-off duties at center ice as the Bobcats and Engineers will switch ends for the second period. Quinnipiac up one to nothing. Gus Van Ness and Oliver Chow with a quick opportunity 10 seconds into the period, but it's deflected away by Marshall. Marshall allowing the first goal of the game to Ethan Lay. He potted his third of the season. Baxter, nice shot on net, but it's eaten up by Peretz, and the whistle's blown. It looks like RPI is trying to wonder, is wondering why the whistle was blown. Peretz did not corral it cleanly. Lepinen would have had the entire back door of the net open because he received the puck when it came out. I'm, I don't know why they called that. That was a very bizarre whistle, but... When the officials lose sight of the puck, they're supposed to blow the whistle, so maybe the official lost sight of the puck on, you know, on the goal line. I'm not sure. It looked like the puck hit Peretz in the gut, and then it bounced right out. 
for LePennon, and LePennon just had to corral it because the whistle had blown, a little errant whistle. So that saves the Bobcats a defensive stand, and now they still lead 1-0. Ice has been cleanly swept. It's such a nice, sleek look after the Zamboni comes across. Solonic, nice tip over to Bon Giovanni. Bon jo plays catch with Lombardi. Lombardi, one-timer, and Marshall corrals it cleanly, and... Bon Giovanni unhinges the net. He has a nice, polite conversation. Down low with Marshall after he bumped the net. So Quinnipiac will have an offensive opportunity here on the faceoff. Desi Burgart will go up right here for the faceoff against True Linden. Burgard, Linden awaiting the puck drop. And the Quinnipiac offensive zone corralled by Van Ness or Ethan DeYoung. DeYoung backhand over to Filion, and Filion is getting beaten up down low. And RPI with a nice defensive play there to get it up into the neutral zone. Rossin in for Quinnipiac, dumps it back over into the neutral zone. LePennin over for RPI, trying to corral it away. And it gets bumped out for Marcus Chorney. Chorney's going to skate behind Peretz. The Bobcats now skating left to right in their home yellows. RPI in their reds with the red bottoms. A lot of red teams in the ECAC, so you can get a little bit confused with Cornell, Colgate, Harvard, St. Lawrence, all wearing red. And the Bobcats just played in the Connecticut Ice Tournament playing Sacred Heart in their red sweaters. So... <laughs> Uh, they're playing red teams all around lately. Is red just like a power color for hockey? I think there is science behind it that when a crowd cheers and they're wearing red jerseys, it's more intimidating to the players on the ice. I believe there is actually science statistics behind that. Well, we'll wait to see when Rand Pecknell is able to convince Quinnipiac and able to be able to get red jerseys. Is a nice save by Marshall and a wraparound opportunity for the Bobcats and a little tussle afterwards. The Tor Linden line just got off the ice. Tor Linden, the captain of the Rensselaer Polytechnical Institute Engineers. That was he has never, he has never scored a point against the Quinnipiac Bobcats in the three years he's played them. Last season they didn't play. He's a senior. They didn't play because of COVID. He has never recorded a point against them. We'll see if he can break that tonight as the captain in a big game, a one nothing game right now. In 101 career games, he has scored 53 career points. None of them have come against Quinnipiac. Brandon Less on the blue line. He's going to flick it down over Van Ness. Van Ness, a wraparound opportunity, but Baxter with a nice stick. And a, another wraparound opportunity for Quinnipiac, and it's again lost. Quinnipiac has to reset again. Oliver Chow is going to skate around. He's going to try to dump it down for Metza. Metza gets tangled up. He falls to the ice. RPI will dump it into the neutral zone. A great defensive stand for the Engineers again. They have numbers if they hustle, and it's a nice play defensively for Quinnipiac. Oliver Gus Chow Van with Ness. Great, yeah, Van Ness and Oliver Chow with a great back check there to break up the play. And that looked like a clean one-on-one -on -one for the RPI skater. The forward for RPI looked like he had a clean break-in. RPI in their offensive zone. Johnson near us. He will fire it down low, and it's knocked away by Brandon Lesson. Peretz got turned around. Johnson, once again, one-timer blocked away by Brindamore. Skyler Brindamore standing strong for the Bobcats. A one-timer by Josh Johnson is going to go all the way down into the glass. Quinnipiac, Oliver Chow, will flick it across. Intercepted by Johnson. Johnson will have to skate in circles, but he saves an RPI opportunity. And now RPI with a miscommunication. And it will go all the way down for Marshall to corral it. That was Mason Clee who just lost sight of the puck. His controller died in the offensive zone. And now RPI has to reset. Josh Johnson skating down low over to Beaton. Beaton one-timer is a little high and wide. Clee down. He's going to go for Lombardi. Lombardi got turned around but able to be corralled by TJ Walsh. Walsh and Klee playing catch now in the offensive in the neutral zone. And now Quinnipiac's able to take control of the puck. Bon Giovanni for Quinnipiac near Ty Smolonic. And Bonjo got his feet absolutely taken out from him. That ref does not put his hand up, so a clean play in the eyes of Stripes. Desi Berger comes onto the ice. 
No interference call. Josh Johnson shot on that. It's going to be blocked away by Peretz. Quinnipiac now had an opportunity. Smolonic hands down the puck. He hits it right into Beaton. And now we're going to get a whistle. I believe we're just going to get a regular icing here as there was a hand in the air, but everything looks to be clean for the moment. 15.35 remaining in the second period. Quinnipiac 16 shots, RPI with six. They have gotten one off on Peretz this period. Nothing has fallen for either side, and it remains 1-0 Quinnipiac. The word one is just not enough in another language. In hockey language, not enough, one shot. Looks like the Bobcats are on the power play. Yeah, and so there you go. The hands were up. We couldn't see what happened. The PA announcer just said Quinnipiac's going on the power play, so he was unable to see what happened as well. But it's Lori Surdy who's going in two minutes, and so Quinnipiac has two minutes to try to better their struggling power play. This is a time you want to capitalize in the game. If you can go up 2-0 on the power play, have a commanding 2-0 lead, you're in control of the game. RPI struggles defensively, but Quinnipiac struggles on the man advantage. They scored their one goal today on even strength less than two minutes after a power play. So maybe Quinnipiac would rather have five on five. The man of the hour, Rand Pecknold, two weeks ago had stated that he was happy with the way the power play was trending. But since the Harvard game, in the post game, since he had said that statement, They've still struggled and haven't really taken off yet. So we'll see if they can capitalize here and start a better trend in goal scoring on the power play. Van Ness and Brandon Les play hokey pokey on the blue line. Van Ness, Rister is going to be blocked away. RPI trying to fling it down. Van Ness is able to keep it in for Quinnipiac so no one has to reset. Oliver Chow on the near side in the corner, going down for Quinlan, and oh, an opportunity, but DeYoung was unable to put his stick on the ice in time. Pushing and shoving on the far side corner, and RPI is going to sling it all the way down. 30 seconds remain in the power play, and Quinnipiac will have to reset. Both teams go for a line change. Ty Smolonic, Mike Lombardi, and Wyatt Bongiovanni amongst the new fresh skaters for Quinnipiac. DeYoung just couldn't get a stick down on that puck back door. He would have had the whole entire net to work with. Matt's up. One. Lombardi looking for Smolonic. He's unable to get it. Smolonic now is able to corral, but he needs help, and he needs it desperately. Bon Giovanni's going to wrap it all the way around. 3-2-1, and RPI kills off their second penalty of the day, and they have numbers. Here's Seath. One shot on that. Peretz needs to corral it. He can't, but Quinnipiac knocks it away. Yanni Peretz, your ECAC goaltender of the month, Standing strong. Huge play with Searity coming right out of the box and getting a shot on that one-on-one -on -one with the goaltender. Perret stands tall. That was a great save on a great opportunity by the penalty committer. Yaniv Perret, so good for Quinnipiac. He has been one of the best goalies, if not the best goalie in the country. And he is a first year. He most recently beat the shutout total in a season by a Quinnipiac Bobcat of eight, previously held by Michael Gartig. He beat that with a shutout over Princeton a few weeks back in a 9 nothing victory, his ninth shutout of the season. That is incredible. I don't think I've ever seen a goaltender of nine shutouts in any level, at least that I've watched or covered. He is certainly in the conversation for the Richter Award, the Hobie Baker Award, two of the most prestigious awards in all of hockey. It doesn't matter if you're a professional or college. It's like, it's like the Heisman. It, if, you, if you win a Heisman, if you win a Hobie Baker, you may not make it professionally, but you have that trophy to your name. Well, I'll tell you what. TJ Friedman just tried the trick shot of the century by tipping the puck up behind him and flinging it up, and it actually was a fairly accurate shot wasn't very fast by any means, but Lyndon Marshall had to make a save on a shot he had no idea it was coming at him. And we're going to get a neutral zone face-off. Is that a high stick potentially for Friedman? He's still on the ice. So Chorney flings it down deep for Quinnipiac, and they will go and chase it. Lay down low for Quinnipiac. 
Tipping it around for Cipolo, and he's held nicely by Johnson. Mandel's going to sling it down low for Friedman. And Chorney couldn't put his stick down on the ice, or excuse me, Cipolo couldn't put his stick down. And now Quinnipiac has to go reset in the neutral zone. RPI with numbers, going to have to fling it down low. Mandel's going to hustle down for Quinnipiac. He skates around and puts a nice move there on an RPI skater. Adamo fell to his backside as a one-timer by Chorney goes just high. Nice save by Marshall to tip it up. Quinnipiac keeping it in their offensive zone, and it's intercepted now by Adamo. And Adamo will go down for, will fling it in for Ross and into Corral for Quinnipiac. Ethan Lay now behind the back for Burgart. Burgart can't corral it. He lost the puck. I also lost the puck. And now it falls down. It looked like it was stuck up in Mason Clee's glove. That happens from time to time. That was like a, uh, a football play. <laughs> he, had the, he had the ball. It was taken in a few yards. <laughs> Yeah, that's a no-go in hockey. You cannot just carry the puck. That'd be pretty cool if you could. This isn't lacrosse, though, is it? No, no, can't, can't do that. Desi Burgart will do the honors for Quinnipiac. He'll go up against Tr Tor Linden, captain for RPI. And the ref deked us all out. He fake dropped it, and everyone went towards it. This is definitely the line you want out there if you're RPI to get something going. Leppin in with seven goals, Linden with 11 and lack of the grinder with 10 assists for his two line mates this season. So that's the line. If you want offense generated, get out of the zone, get down the ice in a hurry, and get to work. Try and make this a tie game. Boy, the ref is just playing mind games right now with Friedman and Linden. He finally drops the puck after about three or four dekes. It's Settery who corrals it for RPI in their defensive zone. He gets pinned up, though, down low by DeYoung. And now RPI is going to fling it into the neutral zone where it is corralled by Desi Burgart. Desi skating down low, fighting right now with Settery. And it's lot, he loses control, and here comes Linden for RPI. Abari Rossinen will shield off an RPI skater to try to corral the puck. DeYoung can't put his stick down. It goes into the neutral zone where RPI will take control in their defensive end. Up ahead, Baxter. He's got only gold jerseys in front of him, so he will dump. And RPI goes for a line change. Behind Yanni Peretz, Quinnipiac swarming defensively, and they're going to come away with the puck. This is Jaden Lee. He's got numbers. If he looks up, he does. He cannot connect with Filion, and it's kept in the offensive zone for Quinnipiac. Now the puck is flung up. I can't see it. It is, goes behind the Jumbotron, and Quinnipiac will reset. DeYoung on the blue line for the Bobcats. Flings it down low for Skyler Brindamore. Brindamore with nothing but red jerseys in front of him. He flings it over for his teammate Metza. Metza to Van Ness down low. He switches places with Oliver Chow. In front of the net, Metza cannot tip it home. Oliver Chow will corral it. He will skate right between two teammates. He doesn't know which way to go. He has to pick one side as skaters are closing in on him. He flings it out, and it'll be collected by the engineers. Down into the Quinnipiac defensive zone we look. RPI goes for a complete line change. Quinnipiac will set up in the neutral zone. Van Ness in front of his own bench. Plays catch with Linden, and a nice save there by Marshall as Brindamore was able to get a solid look up on him. 17th shot of the game for the Bobcats. Still one nothing. under 10 minutes to play. We have reached the halfway point in this game. Bobcat skater falls to the ice. It's Gus Van Ness. There are no arms in the air, so it was a clean play. Bon Giovanni for Van Ness. No, excuse me, that's Chorney. Lippin will fight down with Chorney down low. Mandel's in there for the Bobcats. Now the puck gets flung up in front of Peretz. Peretz quickly. Spins around on his knees and saves it with his chest. Yanni Peretz, what a game he is playing. What a season he is having. This is where the engineers need to settle the play a little bit and set up in the offensive zone. Laka just takes a hack at the puck on that weird bounce that came to him backdoor. Peretz skated towards Laka, and that's how he came so far out of the net. If Laka settled the puck and made a pass into the crease, maybe it goes off of a Quinnipiac defender and into the net. Maybe he finds a teammate backdoor. 
Those are the opportunities you want to capitalize on, on broken plays, on plays that maybe you're not getting the passes to connect. Things aren't necessarily going your way, but you get a lucky bounce. You want to capitalize on those types of opportunities, and sometimes it's as simple as settling the game down. It looks as if Peretz may have been surprised that the puck ended up in his chest there. What are you seeing from Peretz that is making him just the outstanding goalie that we know and love. So Metza had a block shot last night to end the game. The puck stayed in the zone. The shot came out into the slot. And Peretz made a blocker save where the game was on the union forward stick in the slot, the danger zone, the prime spot to be a goal scorer. The player wound up, had the wrist shot ready, loaded, loaded his stick, got the flex to work, ripped a shot in the slot. It's, it was a very fast shot. He looked calm, cool, and collected when the puck came out from the Metza block. Simply blocked it away with the blocker. There was an extended motion. He didn't try and overexert himself to make the save. It was one save, one moment at a time in that final zone uh, when the Union had the puck in the zone. That's how he was dialed in. He just seems so dialed in when he's making those saves that it's one save, then the next save. You know, He, he wasn't trying to overextend himself make a flashy save. It was in that moment he made the save in the time the team needed the save. That's what I've seen for Perez this season, Jack. We're coming out of the media timeout. 9-18 remaining in the second period. John Beaton and Wyatt Bon Giovanni will do face-off honors in front of Yanni Perez on the near side. It's won by Bon Giovanni. Chorney gets pinned up quickly against the boards. Bon Giovanni comes over to help, but Chorney... He's getting his stick bent in every which direction. He can't come away with it, and it's the strong skating engineers that are able to corral it in their offensive zone. Amando, the 6'6", 250 grad student. You do not want to get into a tussle with him, and he absolutely embarrassed Chorney on the boards. Adamo is a French native, 6'6". Six you six. usually only see those types of height numbers at the at an advanced level. At NHL level, you see players that big like a Tyler, Meyer, Tyler Myers in Vancouver, Zidane Char Chara, longtime Bruins captain, six foot six college player from France. That's a combo. <laughs> France is not usually a, a place where uh, college recruits come from, but that's where Adamo is from, and it's, it's interesting to see him in person, you know. Getting ready for this game, I couldn't, it was hard to picture what a six foot six player looks like from up here. On but skates, yeah. I mean, that is a big boy. He transferred in from Robert Morris. And he's three played, seasons there. He played in. He's played in twenty nine games this season. He's played in one hundred and twenty five career games. Twenty goals. Twenty nine goals. Excuse me to his name to go along with thirty assists. And for those of you who can't do quick maths, that's fifty nine career points. So he's looking for his sixtieth career point to try to spoil the shutout party that Yanni Peretz continues to put up on what seems to be a multiple weekly basis. Josh Johnson knocks down the puck in the neutral zone for the Engineers. Chorney over from Mandel. Mandel left wrister will go all the way down hard off the glass behind Marshall. Lapold, Johnson, and Johnson gets his Wrists are blocked away by Ethan Lay, and Lay's going to go chase it. Nice hustle play by number 14. TJ Friedman down for Quinnipiac. Metza as well, but it's corralled by the engineers. Quinnipiac really had no opportunities there. Instead, Cipollone will corral it in the defensive zone. Rebold fires it away. He comes off the ice. Big hit down low on next to the Bobcat bench. Puck is in the Quinnipiac offensive zone. Freeman loses his stick, and that's going to allow the engineers to fling it down deep. Ethan Lay in the neutral zone for Quinnipiac. He's battling right now with Mason Klee and company. It's one away by Metza. Metza in his defensive zone puts a spin move. He's going to fire it over for Cipollone. Cipollone can't get it. It's going to be knocked away by Baxter. Baxter, Chelberg down low. Chelberg's going to fire it down deep. Chelberg, a sixth round pick by the New York Rangers in the 2018 NHL draft playing tonight. He is one of only three drafted players on the ice tonight. 
Most of the time in ECAC play, there's a lot of NHL draftees. Tonight, there's only three, two for the Bobcats and one for RPI. Quinnipiac bench looking for a hand to go in the air. There is not one that's up. RPI had an opportunity in front of the Yanni Peretz. Nothing going, though, for the engineers. Quinnipiac has been relentless on defense, only allowing 10 shots to touch Peretz. Settery on the blue line will fling it down deep. He's just looking for anybody. He's going to set up once again. The lefty will fling it down deep. It's going to go right next to the Teletubbies in the Quinnipiac student section. Circling around in the RPI offensive zone. Settery in front of Avari Rossinen. Flings it down for Mbano. Adamo out to the blue line. This is a great set here for RPI. They are unable to break anything right now. And the Quinnipiac bench is saying, come on, boys, let's get this puck down. And they finally are able to fling it. And it touches Marcus Chorney, who's currently sitting on the bench. So that will prompt a whistle. 5.57 remaining in the second period. We have reached a standstill. 1-0 Quinnipiac. They have not scored. They scored their only goal, excuse me, with about 10 minutes to play in the first period. So we have seen a little over 20 minutes with no offense. Both teams are just kind of playing back and forth right now. And on that goal, Marshall just seemed a little bit shocked that the puck was shot from kind of the half wall at the circle in the way it was. I think there was a lot going on. It was kind of, there was havoc prior to that with Van Ness and Brindamore bringing the puck to the net. Uh, so we haven't seen a real clean goal tonight. Just one goal standing on the board, the long goal by Lay. Uh, halfway through the game now, halfway through the second frame. Puck is won away by the Bobcats. Marshall puts his hand up to sit, tell his boys to lay off, and it's going to go down for an icing. Both teams will go for a line change. RPI desperately needing some fresh skaters after a long offensive set. Quinnipiac, if you're on there, if you're on Rand Pecknold's brain, which of course they are, they are looking to set something up offensively. They have not gotten anything stable in about 10 minutes of gameplay. Quinnipiac wins the faceoff, but it's immediately intercepted in the neutral zone by RPI. Sheer Fultz for RPI and Manchi play catch. In the neutral zone, Mandel for Quinnipiac is there to try to knock it away. Puck goes right into the referee, and Quinnipiac will dump. Marshall comes out from behind the net to corral it. He's going to tip it for Marshall. Chow. Metza in the neutral zone right in front of his bench. Gets shoved by Scherfoldt. RPI will dump, and they will change. As close to a stalemate as you can get, Quinnipiac leads this game 1-0, though nothing exciting has really come of the last 15 or so minutes. Yanni Peretz standing on the near side of his post. Quinnipiac skating left to right. McIsaac with a shot. It's knocked away by Brindamore. Baxter corrals for, Quinnip or for RPI, excuse me, but he flicks it right into the skate of Lombardi. Lombardi's going to flick it back to McIsaac, so McIsaac and Lombardi trade turnovers. Behind Yanni Peretz, we get a whistle here as there's a little friendly hug between McIsaac and Brindermore after those two just battled it out down low. Tough to, get, tough to get into the zone, Jack, for both teams here. I mean, they really haven't, either side has not really had sustained pressure for maybe longer than 30 seconds, but as you just mentioned, we had just had about 10 minutes of no action. Quinnipiac will finally get an offensive face-off after four straight defensive face-offs. Peretz gets a well-deserved breather. DeYoung wins it for Quinnipiac. Barry Rossin in down low. He flicks it back for DeYoung. DeYoung fighting with Baxter. Filion, we haven't called his name much tonight. He's going to be bullied down low by Mason Klee, and we get a whistle here, and I believe Quinnipiac will head on the power play. It may be incorrect, however. Nope. They will head on the power play. 
Third power play opportunity of the night in a one nothing game. This is where you need to capitalize on an opportunity like this, Jack. Four minutes left in the second period. This is where you could turn the tide. It seems, it seems nobody's had really a possession of this game. Rory Herman will head two minutes for boarding. And Quinnipiac with the man advantage. 0 for 2 today. 4.08 remaining in the second period. Bon Giovanni will do the honors for Quinnipiac. Linden for RPI. Puck is not corralled yet. Finally, Quinnipiac's able to take it. And Smolonic with a rare turnover is going to cause Quinnipiac to reset less than 10 seconds into the power play. Behind Yanni Perret skates Lee. Lee's going to fire back for Lombardi. Metza. Bon Giovanni flanks him to his right. That's where he goes. Back to Lee up top. Lee, Bon Giovanni, hokey pokey on the blue line. Metza thought about it, decides for, to go to Smolonic, and the puck goes up. Doesn't hit the net, thought it might have. RPI will dump it. Jaden Lee, nice play, keeps it on the blue line, but he doesn't know if he, if he kept it or not. And now Quinnipiac has to reset. Shorthanded opportunity. It's Le Pen for RPI, but he gets, broke, he gets everything broken up. And Settery will take it now for the Engineers. In their defensive zone, they will fling it all the way down. And RPI will go for a line change. What a penalty kill we've seen today from the Engineers. The Engineers have done a great job of blocking shots, but just getting the puck down ice. Desi Burgart puts the spin move on. The puck is down next to the Eli's logo, and now it's flung out. And really, Quinnipiac might be on the main advantage. Just bitten with a one-timer. Nice save by Peretz. Beaten had daylight, and Yanni Peretz stuck out his left elbow and said, not in my house. Ethan DeYoung now, he needs help. He finds it in Burgard, shot on net, knocked away. Marshall couldn't get it, but there was not a DeYoung there to tip it in for Quinnipiac. 28 seconds remain in the power play. Quinnipiac looks as if they are also skating with four players despite being on the man advantage. This is not exciting hockey if you are a Quinnipiac hockey fan. Brandon Less over for Oliver Chow. Chow for Burgard. No one was home. Chorney in front of the net. He's trying to knock something in. Or Mandel, excuse me. Now Chow. Chow with bodies falling all over Marshall. And RPI just continuing to stand strong. Quinnipiac looks lost. I am absolutely baffled that the number two team in the country can't put together a quality power play. And this has been a problem they've struggled with all season, Jack. You know, keeping pucks in the zone from their de the defensemen and converting on those chances. They, it looked like defenders were in the crease and Marshall couldn't move. And they still couldn't just they flick They couldn't it. find a way to, yeah, you know, Les loses shelf. it out on the blue line. Uh, I'm shocked at that. Uh, they weren't able, you know, it's not clean. Nothing's clean on this power play uh, the last few games and, frankly, all season. But not even opportunities. We haven't even seen real shot attempts tonight, and it's still a one nothing game. Quinnipiac did not put up a shot attempt on that two-minute power play. One forty-nine remaining. They still hold the lead. Chorney gets his shot blocked away by Jake Johnson. Chorney once again. Sip alone down low for Quinnipiac. He kicks it to his own stick. TJ Freeman will wrap it around the boards for Rossinen. And Quinnipiac will turn it over in their offensive zone. They look lost. It is baffling to watch this team play offense right now. <laughs> the puck is pinned up against the Quinnipiac bench. We get a whistle here. Marcus Chorney on his knees right now. He gets a glance from the tra trainer and shakes it off. And Chorney will stay on the ice. Mashi looked pretty banged up heading to the engineer's bench. He was limping a little bit. He looks like he's in pain on the bench right now. Not sure. Keep an eye on that as the left wing on the second line left winger for the engineers just headed off the ice. Banged up knee. It looked like he was hobbling a little bit, but... Mashi, the junior out of Stony Creek, Ontario. Five goals on the season, seven in his career. So he is having a breakout season for the Engineers. Gus Van Ness wins the faceoff, broke between two defenders like a guard on a fast break. And Van Ness does a handstand right in front of the Eli's logo. Don't know what that's all about. But now Oliver Chow trying to fight around engineer defenders. Brindamore with an opportunity. He can't get anything to go down. And RPI will opt to keep it in their defensive zone. That was interesting. 
Jake Johnson flips it up for Walsh. Now Johnson in the neutral zone with Daylight. He's got Linden as a screen in front of him. All he has to do is work on Marcus Chorney, and Chorney puts him right up against the boards. Nice play by number seven in gold. Walsh falls to the floor. 36 seconds remaining in the second period. Quinnipiac with an absolutely abysmal offensive period. They will head to the locker room, and I'm sure the man coaching his 1,000th game will rip into this team about how poor their offense is right now. You know, Jack, it's not really about in this game right now. It is a one nothing game. They could use more offense, but they are winning the game. It's more about the tougher competition that they're going to have to face at this level and in the tournament play that they're going to be playing in. They had a tough game against Sacred Heart in the Connecticut Ice Tournament where they went down and they ended up winning the game in overtime, but they struggled in that game as well with all the same consistent issues. Consistency is the problem for the Bobcats as we have reached the end of the second period. Quinnipiac clinging to their fingertips on a 1-0 lead. Shots 21-10 in favor of the Bobcats, but that is not the story heading into the third period. Who will the skater be that breaks the rut that RPI is in offensively, and who will it be for Quinnipiac that makes the big play to put them up 2-0? Those are the storylines that we will have for you in 15 minutes right here on QBSN. From above, the Frank Parati Jr. Arena, the Quinnipiac men's ice hockey team, and the RPI engineers in a 1-0 battle currently held by Quinnipiac. Jack Main, Matt Mungo on the airwaves of the Quinnipiac Bobcats Sports Network. It was a stagnant second period in which we, in which we saw neither team gain control of the puck, but really just some poor power play opportunities from the Bobcats. Right now, a little bit of an ECAC scoreboard update. Union is up 5-3 to three at Princeton. Quinnipiac's up 1-0 against RPI. Clarkson are in Yale right now, and they're tied. And that has implications on the Bobcats as they are one point ahead of Clarkson in the ECAC standing. So the ice has been freshly Zambonied. Number one, Yanni Peretz, and number one, Lyndon Marshall the goalkeepers for their respective squads. The crowd trying to get the Bobcats back into it as they have gone absolutely quiet offensively. 30 seconds into the final 20 minutes of play, Quinnipiac trying to hold off RPI and earn their 23rd victory of the season and their 12th in ECAC play. RPI trying to play spoilers. Oliver Chow with a shot on net. It's blocked away by Marshall. RPI trying to even up the score, and if they were able to come, if they're able to even it up and take the lead, as Peretz has to make a nice sprawling save. So back-to-back -back saves by number ones and goals for both squads. If RPI can hold off, it can come back and win. It would be their eighth, and they would move to 500 in ECAC play. It would be their 13th victory overall. It would move them into the top four of the ECAC, which is exactly what they came in here to fight for, but haven't shown much fight tonight, Jack. They haven't, however, they are one solid possession away from tying this game up. As Quinnipiac has, continues to struggle offensively. We got our first whistle of the third period, comes with 18.40 remaining. Quinnipiac up 22 to 11, exactly double what RPI has in shots on goal. And we've already seen Yanni Perret hit, Yanni Perrette's hit the deck in an attempt to make a save. So RPI showing signs of life offensively Yanni Peretz will have to play the period of his season to get Quinnipiac a victory. Ty Smolonic unable to keep the puck in the neutral zone. An RPI will set up. Smolonic with a solid play defensively, but Anu gets hit hard by Metza in his offensive zone. So Metza with a nice play defensively. Michael Lombardi will corral the puck in the neutral zone. He needs help and he flings it right into four RPI skaters. RPI will set up cleanly in their defensive zone. The team switching sides, as we mentioned. Quinnipiac skating right to left, no matter how you've tuned into us. On your phone, tablet, or computer. Quinnipiac is going from right to left. 
RPI from left to right. The puck is behind Marcus Chorney. He had no idea where it was. He's going to wrap it all the way around the boards and into the neutral zone we go. It's Ethan DeYoung. He has space, but he gets walled off nicely. What a play by Settery. Laurie Settery of RPI keeping the engineers in this game. DeYoung is going to flick it down for Avari Rossinen. Crowd wanted a penalty. It's in front of the net, and it's knocked away by RPI. Fillion needs help. He's going to look for DeYoung. Instead, opts to take it himself. He's getting bullied. Avari Rossinen is going to go for Chorney. Chorney with a wrister. That really had no shot of going anywhere. It is Arendt. DeYoung behind the net. Dumps it off for Fillion. Fillion needs help. He finds it in Marcus Chorney, and he flicks it right into RPI. And RPI will set up now in the neutral zone. They flick it down deep. Quinnipiac goes for a two-man line change. Shot on net. Perrette stood strong, though. That was a rather, rather easy save for the first year. Yaniv Perrette, your reigning ECAC goalie of the month. Quinnipiac continuing to struggle offensively as RPI has really had control of the last 10-ish minutes of gameplay. Quinnipiac had an exciting opportunity at the end of the second period. Uh, nothing was able to fall for them, though. The whistle kind of sounded a little too early, but Quinnipiac looked like they had something going here. In front of the net, it's collected finally by the Bobcats. Chorney will work it up, but he's going to flick it to Baxter of RPI. The engineers have great possession so far this, in, to start this third period. They've had a few opportunities getting pucks in on net, getting some shots on net, and showing some life here, Jack. Chelberg and Baxter play catch in the neutral zone. Flipped up for LePennin. LePennin, what wrister from the point is going to be just wide. Van Ness of the Bobcats will flick it into the neutral zone. Klee trying to work it around to Laka. It's going to be chased by Jaden Lee behind Yaniv Peretz. One engineer in front to beat. Instead, Lee will flick it down deep. For Oliver Chow, Chow couldn't get clean control of the puck. Quinnipiac has to reset near the blue line, and it's going to be a one-man line change for the Bobcats. Klee, behind his own goal, is fighting with Brindamore down low. He tries to flick it for LePennin. Instead, it's corralled by Brandon Less. Gus Van Ness playing keep away from Lee. Shot on net. Walsh had Marshall didn't know where it was, and Brindamore couldn't get his stick on the ice. Brandon Less had a beautiful crosser in front, and Brindamore just couldn't put his stick down. And now RPI will set up in the neutral zone. Lots of yelling and screaming coming from the Bobcats bench, trying to light a fire any way they can. 14-40 remaining in regulation. Brandon Less is going to dump it down deep, and Quinnipiac will go for another line change. Zach Metza in the neutral zone is going to poke it for Lombardi. Lombardi got corralled on by Walsh, and Mendel's going to have to take it in the defensive area. Smolonic with the puck now. We haven't called his name much tonight. He has not been much of a factor. A shot on that is taken in by Marshall right between the pads, and we get a whistle with 14-13 remaining in the final period. What has RPI done to really take Smolonic out of this game? Smolonic just doesn't seem to have the stretch pass. They haven't, we haven't seen the Bobcats hit Smolonic on a stretch pass to exit the zone, and that's how he scored three goals this season were on stretch passes where he, was, he got a pass through two zones of the ice, broke in with his tremendous speed, and was able to score on a breakaway or a one-on-one -on -one with the defender. We haven't seen much of that tonight. We haven't seen him utilize the speed, and they're, they're doing a great job of negating zone entry. All, all night, the engineers in this... Pretty stagnant game, have been doing a good job of making sure that a player like Smolonic isn't coming in with blazing speed. Now, we have seen on some line changes, Chow had a few opportunities coming off the bench, but other than that, we haven't seen a, a break-in from the red line, the defensive red line of the Bobcats, the goal line, all the way through two zones to the other red line or the opposite blue line. And that's where Smolonic has scored three goals this season, and he scored against Harvard that way on a Sports Center top 10 play, the number two uh, top 10 play of the week uh, in, I believe it was January 18th. So, so about a 
two weeks ago ish. Yeah, not too not too long ago. He was scoring stretch breakaway goals and uh we just haven't seen him get those opportunities in this game. So a great work defensively by Dave Smith's squad. Lombardi in the neutral zone. He's getting held hard. And again, the crowd looking for a flag, or excuse me, a penalty. No, none will fly. DeYoung for F Quinlan in front of the RPI net, and a nice defensive play there by Rory Herman. Rory Herman took it right away from Quinlan. In front of the net with another opportunity. The Bobcats are unable to convert again. Putting his pad down strong there was Lyndon Marshall. But still Quinlan fighting for the puck with McIsaac behind Marshall. The puck is flung high into the air. And it will go all the way down into the RPI offensive zone where quickly Avari Rossinen is there. Hall Bauer for RPI will fling it down deep. Peretz comes out from behind his net to try to corral it. He cannot. No harm, no foul though as it's knocked up into the neutral zone for Quinlan. He comes off in favor of Chorney. Ethan Lay as well comes on for the Bobcats. Brandon Less will flick it down deep, trying to find DeYoung. DeYoung is being tangled up down deep with Jacob Lacka. Lay, the lone goal scorer in this game for the Bobcats. Less for Phil, Phil Sillion, excuse me. Chorney will keep the puck in the blue line with his glove, trying to pick it up like a shortstop. And now RPI with numbers going the other way. Hal Bauer will cross for LePennin, and it's going to be knocked away by Quinnipiac. Great defensive play there by Brendan Less. Joey Cipollone looking for the puck and a breakaway opportunity. Well, we would usually see Ty Smolonic. We'll be sure to ask Rand Pecknold how Ty can get some more opportunities in the post-game press conference. But right now, the focus is on the next 11 minutes and 50 seconds, and if the Bobcats can cling to this 1-0 lead. Jaden Lee behind Yanni Peretz gets shoved to the ground. No arms are flying, though. Jaden Lee actually comes away with the puck on that play. Gus Van Ness gets tangled up next to the RPI bench. Van Ness getting thrown around by Scherfoltz and Abomno. Oliver Chow comes away with it for the Bobcats. He's trying to find space and find Skylar Brindamore. But Brindamore is being bullied, and now Jaden Lee with a puck. One shot. It's knocked around and in front of the net, and a great kick save there that time by Justin Abdamo. The 6'6", 250 skater, just so hard to shoot around. Mandel for the Bobcats. With a left wrister in, and a nice kick save there by Marshall. Marshall's putting in work in the last two periods. 10.43 remaining in the third period. Quinnipiac clinging to that 1-0 lead. Mendel, no stranger to walk in the blue line, playing four seasons for Denver before coming here as a graduate to Quinnipiac on the Bobcats' blue line. 26 games for Rand Pecknell's squad this season as Arister and Yanni Peretz took it like a champ and held on to the puck. And we finally get a stoppage of play. 10.25 remaining in the final period. Quinnipiac still clinging to that one nothing lead, and Yanni right there took a fastball to the chest. The engineers are struggling to get those second, third rebound opportunities that they can score on a goaltender of this caliber. Rebounds are exactly what's going to get you a, a goal, backdoor, a lucky bounce, anything to crash the net. Struggled to get that tonight. That's how that save kind of ended up. A hard shot coming in, Perez swallows it up, no second chance there. Icing is waved off. Ty Smolonic gets tripped up right in front of the Teletubbies. Smolonic tips it around for Lombardi. He gets his pass intercepted by Mason Klee. He flings it down deep, and now we get an icing call with under 10 minutes to play in the third period. Quinnipiac will go for a line change. RPI keeps their five. 9.57, Quinnipiac up one, nothing on RPI, trying to get their 23rd win of the season and their 12th in ECAC play. Desi Burgart does the honors for Quinnipiac. 
Dabinsky for RPI. It's won by Burgart, but now RPI will come down with it. Marcus Chorney behind his own net. Gets the puck taken away from him. That was Ray Reed LeBold. Getting into the action there for RPI. Now Desi Burgart with space, and he's got numbers. Philly on, one-timer. Oh, what a save by Marshall! Marshall was one way. He had to go around for another, and Marshall with a din -din 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 -din. Spread eagle. Marshall comes all the way across the crease using that 6-3 frame of his. Blocks a backdoor opportunity that was a sure goal on the break-in from Phil Yon and Dayong. Marshall with one of the greatest saves I've ever seen in the Frank Parati Jr. Arena. He was all the way on the near side post. Sproul, full spread eagle. He had to kick his left leg out to try to deflect the back. We're just getting another look at it. Off the toe, wow, Off what a save. Toe. Bergart in space. It was over to De Young and then Fillion and Bergart with a beautiful chance and if he had just top shelved it, he would have had it. He was unable to get it in Marshall with an unbelievable save. We haven't talked enough about Marshall. He set a career high, 39 saves on January 2nd this year against Army West Point. He went on a four game win streak from October 15th to 30th, only allowing five goals in four games. One of those games, a shutout victory. So Marshall, backup, veteran backup, he's played well and he's played out, he's played on his head tonight. The Bobcats have, haven't brought a lot his way, but in the saves where he had to make a big save, he's made it. A little bit of a fluky goal from the Bobcats gets by him, but it's still a one nothing game as we have the timeout here right now. Marshall was benched in favor of the first year Jack Watson. Watson pl has played very well for Dave Smith, but he may have to reconsider his goaltender options after tonight. Lyndon Marshall single-handedly keeping RPI in this game against the number two team in the nation. Now they aren't playing like the number two team in the nation, but it certainly doesn't go without saying he's had to make a few big saves on players like Oliver Chow, some of the Quinnipiac, the Bobcats, better players. It is such a treat to be able to be back in person to call games live as they happen. Those are the kind of moments that we missed a year ago, having to call games remotely for QBSN but able to watch things like that, that save live was one of the most impressive feats I have seen. I haven't seen a ton of hockey, but that was a special play by Lyndon Marshall, who's looking to reclaim that starting role. If RPI can come back and win it, that's the play that we're going to talk about. Jaden Lee gets tangled up in front of the RPI net. So the Bobcats won the faceoff coming out of the RPI timeout. Quinnipiac can rouse the puck in the neutral zone. Friedman takes a swack at it. Can't dump it down, though, and he has to stay on the ice. Metza, Friedman, Oliver Chow now. Chow with space. He gets the puck knocked around. What a defensive play that time by Kyle Halber, Halbauer. Kyle Halbauer standing in strong, taking the check. Keeps this game 1-0 Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac finally getting some offensive rhythm. A puck in front of the net. Oliver Chow can't get around his defender. Hal Bauer standing in strong for the Engineers. He is taking a beating. Oliver Chow kicks the puck over to Metza. That's a great creative play there. Metza with the puck. He needs to find help. He tries. He does find Van Ness. Over to Brindamore on the near side blue line. One-timer by Rossin and is blocked by Linden. Brindamore with the puck now. Quinnipiac again finding that offensive rhythm that has been missing for most of the, for all of the second period and most of the third period. So with 728, Quinnipiac finally able to get some control, which has really been the big thing. Oliver Chow shot on net and it is corralled by Marshall. Marshall with another nice save to keep RPI in it. A very clean last 20 minutes of gameplay. No one has head, to the, has head to the penalty box this period so far. 7.19 remain. We have a stoppage of play. Wow. We, all of a sudden, things have got 0 to 100 real quick, Matt. Yeah, and that's, 
that's the beautiful thing about the game of hockey, Jack. You know, occasionally you get those plays where lucky bounces happen. You start getting things going, and uh, I think players feel that energy. You know, we talked about COVID. RPI did not play last the last season in the ECAC, so they're responding to the crowd. The Bobcats are responding to a home crowd that's packed tonight for Ann Pecknell's 1,000th game, and I think the players react to that, and I think they feel that energy when Marshall makes a save like that and he hears the crowd uh, ooh and awe. Ah. I think the players respond to that very well, and a goaltender of his caliber is responding, and he can heat up because of that. And I think that's why we've seen him make a few uh, better saves in the in the last few minutes than we've seen him make all all game because of that. So I think Marshall's standing tall, and if RPI can get some offensive work going, it'll make for an interesting final seven minutes in this third frame. Only down by a goal. We keep mentioning it, Jack, like something's going to change, but Quinnipiac hasn't scored, capitalized on any of their opportunities, and RPI hasn't really done much to pressure Peretz. But Marshall's been challenged, and Mar uh, Marshall has answered that challenge. An exciting 7-19 remain. The storylines are Rand Pecknold. Can he get his a win in his 1,000th game? Jaden Lee shot on net, and Marshall with another kick save. Agnew will flick it down and keep it in play. No, it went into the RPI bench. Jack Agnew just popped it right up into the air and flicked it right into the bench, so yet another stoppage of play. So, yes, the storylines, as I was alluding to. Rand Pecknold, 1,000th career game coached tonight, right here in the Frank Ferrati Jr. Arena, trying to get that victory that has been very shaky looking at times. RPI trying to play spoiler, and RPI trying to get one of their more impressive come from behind wins of the season. You have to imagine that Quinnipiac will not fare very well in the poll when it comes out on Monday. No, and their, their play the last five games has not been very good. They played a Sacred Heart team that had no business taking them to overtime in the Connecticut Ice Tournament, but played them really well. That's not a discredit to Sacred Heart. That's a testament to the fact that Quinnipiac is not playing that well as of recently, as of late. Uh, they've struggled a little bit. And I think the Bobcats have struggled in the last few games because they haven't capitalized on power play opportunities. They haven't capitalized on those two-on-ones. We just saw a tic-tac-toe play. You can't capitalize on those opportunities against a weaker team or a team that isn't in your caliber of play. We're not talking about a Minnesota State or a Minnesota Duluth. We're talking about, or Ohio State, you know, a team in the Big Ten. If we're going to talk about different teams in different conferences and uh, a BC in the, in the Hockey East, we're talking about uh, RPI, ECAC rival, but uh, so of course they're going to play a hard, but a team that you, sh this should be a, a team that you're able to put more than one goal against and not struggle against. Philly on and the Bobcats putting up a couple of shots on Marshall and Marshall getting tangled up down low. Mandel can't connect with DeYoung behind the net. All of a sudden Marshall's had to make three consecutive saves off the icing. DeYoung gets thrown around into the bench. Again, the crowd looking for a penalty. There's not one coming, and RPI pokes it away. DeYoung, one-timer in front of the net, and it's knocked away by Jack Anu. Jack Anu standing strong defensively, saving Marshall from having to make his 30th save of the game. Jack Anu in high school won the Conditioning and Strengthening Award in his high school as well as Best Defensive Player. So both of those awards standing tall today. If you're just joining us, Quinnipiac clinging to a 1-0 lead. They've had opportunities, but unreal play by Lyndon Marshall, the grad student goaltender for RPI, has kept the engineers in this game, and they look close to breaking this Quinnipiac defense. Marcus Chorney will put a move on LePennon and free himself up. It's into the neutral zone in front of the Bobcat bench. Now we're starting to see some hustle from both sides as we approach under five to play. The puck is dumped down deep. Icing's waved off. Oliver Chow collecting it in the defensive zone of the Bobcats. TJ Friedman getting in there. LePennon chasing it down with Chorney. It's knocked ahead for Cipollone. Cipollone's got Oliver Chow, but three engineers in front of him, he's going to have to dump it and Quinnipiac will go for a line change. Skylar Brindamore, Brandon Less, Gus Van Ness will take the puck now. 
Less over to Brindamore for Zach Metza. Metza gets the ball, it gets the puck knocked around, excuse me. 420 remaining in the third period. RPI setting up, trying to be methodical, and now they just fling it all the way down. And that'll be nice. 411 remaining. Quinnipiac still up 1-0. RPI just 14 shots to the Bobcats 29. You question how the Bobcats would fare in the poll standings, and I think they've already taken a little bit of a hit. They reached that peak number one for the third time in Rand Pecknell's career, reaching number one in 2013 and 2015, but I don't think they're going to move up after this weekend. No, it has been a rather poor showing of hockey and really fortunate to come away with the 2-1 win last night against Union right here at home. RPI, a team under 500, still top five in the ECAC, giving the Bobcats something to worry about as the faceoff is won by the Bobcats. Van Ness will circle all the way around looking for Oliver Chow. Can't get a stick down. It's in front of the net. There's bodies flying. Does Marshall have it? He does. Wow. <laughs> Another save by Marshall. Just standing on his head in the crease. Gobbles it up with his leg pads. The puck was behind him. I thought someone may have potted the puck in in the crease. Looked like it was loose and there were a few defenders and some Bobcats hanging around the net from there. Boy, I'll tell you what. The lack of excitement has driven some fans to head to the exits early. 4-0-1 remain. Quinnipiac still up 1-0. They look like they're on the brink of getting something to fall, though. RPI wins the faceoff. A rare win for them today. Ty Smolonic gets into the action. Again, Ty has been rather neutralized in this contest so far. RPI finally getting it into their offensive zone. Halberg fires one on Yaniv. Yaniv knocks it away with his left elbow, holding that Stick in his right hand, excuse me. Shot on net, knocked away once again by Peretz. Hallberg will fling it down deep. Lombardi skates over for the Bobcats, and it'll be the big Justin Amando. Adamo skating into the neutral zone for the Bobcats, that big 6-6 six, six frame. Don't want to take a hit in front of him. Here comes Oliver Chow, fast skating, left-handed wrister. He will not get it to fly in. RPI is able to reset. Jay. Jake Johnson flings it into the neutral zone for the Engineers. Desi Burgard, Oliver Chow. Chow trying to break away from three men. Puts a shot on net, and it's knocked away by Marshall. Desi Burgard's there to collect the rebound for the Bobcats. He loses it on the skate of Jacob Lacka, and now it's flung all the way down for Marshall to collect it out of his net. RPI with... 2.36 to decide if they want to pull their goalie in favor of an extra skater. You have to imagine that that will come in the next minute or so. Ethan Lay flings it all the way down the boards, and we get a stoppage of play with 2.25. Quinnipiac doubling exactly the number of shots RPI has, but RPI has put a couple up in the last few minutes. 30 to 15. Quinnipiac leads in that stat. But once again, it's been the quality of looks that Quinnipiac has been getting. They haven't been great. And when they have, Lyndon Marshall has been right there to be a brick wall. Marshall, this is definitely not a game you can look back on. Right now at one nothing, and say that Marshall was a cause for this loss or allowed too many goals on weak opportunities. I mean, he's made saves in every which way. Brenda Moore wins the faceoff for Quinnipiac. Ethan Lay can't corral it in the neutral zone, and that will allow the engineers to set up. They fling it down rather lazily, though, and Zach Metza will pick it up. Brenda Moore has TJ Friedman in front of him, and he just can't find him. That was a awkward-looking pass and just went right back into the, red, into the red jerseys. Under two to play. What will Dave Smith's squad have in mind? Will they pull Marshall with under a minute, two minutes to go? He's in there right now. We'll keep you posted. TJ Friedman looks for Brindamore. Brindamore is going to be swarmed. He needs help, and every single Bobcat is off the ice. And Brindamore will just put a wrap around on net. Nothing going. Ethan DeYoung will forecheck an uh, engineer attack, and now off comes Marshall with a minute 26 to play. RPI will go up by one for one skater. Howbauer into the offensive zone. 
Shot on Peretz, knocked around, it's in the air and it's in the crowd. What a block by Griffin Mendel, it hits off of him. It looked like there was a wide open net if his body wasn't there. Starting to bring the pressure on really quickly on that dump in. Get the shot from the point and the rebound in the slot. It looked like it hit off of, see they're playing the re replay now. That was it looked indeed. like it was off of Mendel. Mendel indeed standing Linden, in who, strong. Linden who hasn't recorded a career point against the Bobcats. The, he sure was looking for it. It looked like he had meatballs in his eyes there. Linden will do the face-off honors as Matt mentioned earlier. 53 career points, none of them against the Bobcats. He has been playing them for the last three seasons. Of course, RPI missed all of last year to COVID. Quinnipiac wins the faceoff. Metza will fling it down deep. There's an empty net, so if the Bobcats can just fling it down, they could go up two. It'll be Mandel who flicks it down for Oliver Chow. Chow's got space, and it's what a play by Jake Johnson. Jake Johnson came flying in from nowhere to take it away from Chow, and RPI will set up under a minute to play. It's flung down deep. Metza can't corral it. De Young, Bon Giovanni now with space. Bon has got to fling it. He does. He misses the net. 36 seconds, and we have an icing. If if the engineers capitalize here, you got to wonder that the Bobcats are going to look at this those two opportunities as great opportunities to end the game. Chow, full speed ahead. The back check by Johnson to break that play up. It, it would have been game over. We have a timeout here. One minute timeout. I believe RPI will go and talk it over. Things are getting interesting here at the People's United Center as the Quinnipiac men's ice hockey team. Likely not number two after today, so soak it all up. They have a one nothing lead on the RPI engineers. Yanif Peretz with a knee in the goal. He has a lot on his mind. He is trying to will his men to their... 12th victory in ECAC play. It'll be an interesting week for sure at practice, you can imagine, for this Quinnipiac men's team. And if you're RPI, if you, if you don't come away with the victory today, really nothing to hold your head about. You've got Lyndon Marshall back on track after he was benched for a first year. And you really gave the number two team in the country fits offensively. That entire second period was abysmal for Quinnipiac. And listen, that's what we've seen a few teams do come in and do this season. They play up to the Bobcats, uh, who were a number one team in the nation two weeks ago, dropped to number two. But if you can play to that level, if you're in the middle of the pack in the ECAC, you can make some noise. And, and they may not get into the top four tonight. If the engineers don't get into the top four tonight, they'll surely have more opportunities in the next coming games this week. RPI wins the faceoff, Baxter. Flings it down and it'll hit the net, so we'll get another face-off. 31 seconds remain. Quinnipiac holding on to that one nothing lead. Dabinsky doing the honors for the engineers. And once again, the ref just having fun with these skaters, faking the puck drop. Dabinsky beside himself right now. Now the referees are going to look to, are going to, they're going to give everybody the okay here. Stop playing around, boys. Let's play some hockey. The puck is finally dropped. Who has it? It's just kind of floating around between Zach Metza and his skates. He flies to the ground. A shot on net is wide, corralled by Halbauer on the near side blue line. Taken in now. RPI just firing things at net. 10 seconds to play here. Quinnipiac needs to just fling it down the ice and they win. Five, four, three. It's knocked away, it's in space. It's gonna go all the way down. The game is over. The Bobcats hold on for the least exciting victory I have ever seen. However, Yanni Peretz gets his 10th shutout of the season, one of the greatest seasons we've ever seen from a Quinnipiac goaltender. He continues to add to his legacy as one of the greats to ever do it, and he's only in his first year in gold and blue. Matt, it was one heck of a game. In Rand Pecknold's 1,000th game, 
first year goaltender who at the beginning of the season on Q30 television and in QBSN, we looked and said, who's going to be the starter for Quinnipiac this season? Who's going to be the Bobcat starter, St. C or Peretz? The net is one of theirs if they can take it. Ten shutouts later, I think we can say it really belongs to Peretz. Rand Pecknold wins his 1,000th game, Jack, and it wasn't exciting, but they got the job done. We'll see how they fare in the bigger picture with their standings and rankings, but they win another ECAC conference game. Well, Yanni Peretz needs one more shutout to move into top five all time in career shutouts. And boys and girls, it, only is, it may only take him 22 games to get into the top five in all time shutouts. Yanni Peretz is the Quinnipiac men's ice hockey team right now. We don't know where they're going to end up on Monday in terms of nationally rank of national rankings, but the play of Yanni Peretz is the reason why people continue to come in and pack the People's United Center. Quinnipiac men's ice hockey leaves the leaving the ice right now. The engineers have already gone and if you're Dave Smith and his squad, nothing to hold your head about. But really, one heck of a game by Lyndon Marshall and Yanni Peretz. Those two put on one heck of a show for everyone who came and watched tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in to this broadcast on QBSN. Quinnipiac will be back in action next weekend when they take on Brown right here at the People's United Center. That actually will be on Tuesday. So get your popcorn ready because we have Tuesday night hockey Coming, from, coming for you right here at the People's United Center on QBSN. For Matt Mungo, I'm Jack Main. Be sure to go follow all the QBSN socials on Twitter and Instagram. Like us on Facebook. And be sure to subscribe to the Miked Up podcast wherever you can find it. Once again, for Matt Mungo, I'm Jack Main. You are listening to Quinnipiac Men's Ice Hockey. They win 1-0 over RPI. <laughs>